Good morning, Revolution, and welcome to our conversation this morning. We're very happy to uh, see all of you out there in Facebook land and YouTube land and uh, all over the land uh, in the United States, north and south <laughs> and east and west, Rosanna and Scott and uh, uh, Anita and Michael. Our regular crew is here. How y'all doing? We're doing good. Good. It's sunny uh, out here I'm today. Talking about. Yeah, weather well, here is beautiful. Weather, weather. Yeah, you got a blue sky behind you, Scott. Crystal, crystal yep. blue. I see, and with with woodpeckers and <laughs> and uh, all kinds of things going on this morning. Anita, yep. did you watch uh, Mr. Biden speak last night? No, I didn't watch it last night, but I watched it this morning on YouTube. Um, and it was uh, it was it was. It was worth watching, I think. I, I think. Oh, come pretty, on, say it. It was a good speech. It was a good speech. He's a good communicator. And I think he really did a lot of good in terms of reducing the demonization of government per se for a while. You know, I mean, that we've had, we've been exposed to that for, for well, since Ronald Reagan. Um, and I think, I think it really, it was a very good speech. And, and uh, I, you know, I think, he can be proud of the, the Affordable Care Act and I, or no, Affordable Care Act, sorry, America Rescue Plan. America um, Rescue Plan. Exactly. Rosanna, is the American Rescue Plan gonna rescue America? Well, it'll make a notch into it, I think. You know, I, I, and I think for people who don't have anything, it's gonna be a big deal. So, you know, we can't minimize it for many, many, many uh, people who, who are just living on the edge or have already fallen off the edge and this will help them to get back on their feet. However, you know, it would have been great if that minimum wage would have been uh, raised. That yeah. really, I would have said, yes, definitely that's gonna really help. And it's not just gonna help the workers but it helps the economy overall. So it's, uh, you mm -hmm. know, it, it's a shame yeah, I, that we weren't able to do that. Scott, I read somewhere that there's a philosophy behind every budget. What's the philosophy behind this rescue plan? Well, this is, um, I mean, I don't know if there's a philosophy behind it, but there's, there's sure a movement behind it. You know, this was, this is a direct result, like the PRO Act is a direct result of, of the mobilization of uh, the people led by um, the, the left and the working class and, and, uh, people of color and, and women uh, in a, in the lead up to the elections. Um, that's what's really behind it, and it, it marks a a repudiation of of the sort of neoliberal model of austerity, 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 and you know stimulus at the top and and, and crumbs at the bottom. Uh, this is, uh, I think, Robert Reich mentioned that uh, you know how long has it been since we've seen a bill that has no handouts to the ruling class. Uh, to get them to sign on to it. I mean, the, the, the thing you call a handout is not raising the minimum wage. It actually raises taxes on the rich. So it, this is a big step. It's not everything that, that we need. And I mean, for me, the biggest um, hole in it, I think, is that it doesn't, as far as I understand, it doesn't provide anything to undocumented uh, people, um, which is still, you know, a, a travesty. Uh, but um, it, is a, it is a huge deal. So are you ready to say Biden, Biden, he's our guy? With him, we can touch the sky. Are you are you getting on uh, that I'm, Biden? Are you riding with Biden yet, Scott? I'm 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 ready to say that it's uh, that it's the movement <laughs> and um you know if we, we that we need to end the filibuster uh to to bend the um Republican uh plus a couple uh group in the Senate that 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 keeps blocking these things. Did you say that the left and the working class led this movement, Scott? I, I, I'm not quite seeing that. I said the, the, the left, the working class, um, people of color and women. Um, so a sort of a broad, I mean, there were forces beyond that, certainly. There were, you know, there were moderate conservatives, there were, um, you know, ruling class liberals, whatever. But the, I think what this, you know, leadership of the movement is, is demonstrated our leadership of political change is demonstrated by whose mark gets put on something. And between the PRO Act and this rescue plan, it looks to me like the people's mark uh, 
uh, has been has been put on this. Um, There's a big stamp on it, huh? Michael, uh, I hear, again, I'm going to come back to this issue. They say that there's a philosophy uh, behind every budget. Do you, do, do you think that there's a philosophy behind this, behind this rescue plan? Well, I keep going back to um, the, the months before the election when Biden was promising to be the most you know, progressive or pro-labor president since FDR. And so I can kind of see some of that reflected in, in this uh program, this rescue package. And, you know, I think as communists, as, as representatives of the working class, we have to support the progressive policy um, of Biden, of the quote unquote, you know, centrist Democrats whenever possible. And I agree with Scott that, you know, when we're out there on, you know, picket lines or, you know, protesting, whether it be in support of black lives or, you know, uh, protesting evictions, it is the, you know, quote unquote left and the people's movements out there marching around, you know, I don't really see, you know, um, Nadler or Pelosi out there marching around with us. So we're the ones demanding it. And, you know, the center responds to it. So I'd agree with that. But in terms of a philosophy behind it, I would say, you know, it, it, it's, um, I guess the center, you know, the Biden administration doing its best uh, to, to help people put a dent in, in uh, helping people, as Rosanna was saying, um, in the middle of this crisis. There was a broad people's coalition that defeated Trump. It included Republicans and centrist Democrats and liberals and people with no ideology and, and, and all kinds of forces were involved in it. But this movement has been growing for some time, you know, it, it, I mean, it's just it's been percolating and percolating. And then all of a sudden uh, it exploded on the scene, uh, built up over the course of the women's marches the marches, the immigrant rights marches, and so on and uh, so forth. But I want to come back to this idea. C.J. Atkins yeah. wrote an article uh, in the People's World, Marxism uh, Analysis of Neoliberalism, Anita. And right. uh, he said that the class struggle is what determined this bill. Do you agree with that? I think so. I mean, I, I, I think the philosophy behind this bill is a, a, an abandoning of trickle down economics. And instead of delivering those resources to the top, um, delivering them to the people. And what one thing CJ pointed out in his article, which I think was a really good summary, but um, was uh, that it, it's, it's really the first time that these these goods go to uh, the working class instead of uh, to like like Scott said no no handouts to the ruling class um, so I think um, yeah I, th I think it's that's the philosophy behind it sort of the end of the trickle down philosophy uh, an, a repudiation of it but maybe what they're trying to do Rosanna is win the midterm election. And they're trying to get over this hump, save capitalism, like Roosevelt saved capitalism during the 1930s. And then they might go back to politics and business as usual. What do you think? Well, that may be their that may be their idea. I don't I don't doubt that that's what they're thinking, but they they forget the equation of the working class and the forces and what the working class is learning from these experiences. I think that also it could be that the working class were, were coming out of the clouds uh, of being told that government doesn't do anything for you, you know, mm -hmm. that you have to do it all on your own and not to depend on government. Yet our tax dollars go to government. Our tax dollars go to fund the government. And so why should they not take care of us, mm -hmm. especially in these kinds of situations? So I think it's starting to change the narrative Maybe not, not as they would like it, but I think people are beginning to see. It. And I think this, what we need to do also is push that narrative out, and 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 help and help in that effort. But yeah, I mean, you know, that it's no doubt that they're looking to win. They made a mistake uh, during the Obama years. I think they're looking to fix it, or to you know not fall like they did the last time. But um, they failed to see that the working class is. More, is more powerful than anything else. 
a united at that people. point that that uh rosanna just made that that the idea that the government has a responsibility to take care of the people the cloud coming out that is the philosophy i would argue behind this legislation and 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 reasserting that social contract so to speak and the primacy of it is the most important from a marxist standpoint because what republicans tried to do reagan bush uh trump uh nixon was to destroy that idea you know that business was a private enterprise is responsible the individual is responsible and so the reestablishment of this idea really important yes or no god's going to say yes but <laughs> no i'm just going to say i'm just going to say yes um you know because capitalism um part of its ideological work is to impose conditions on people that make them that sort of reinforce its own narratives right um defund the government and then tell people that the government is useless and you know it kind of goes on that way and this is like stopping that um putting out the idea and giving it a material backing you know the government um it it serves us it is this is you know ostensibly uh some form of democracy the government belongs to us um and if it's not serving us what good is it that's that's a powerful idea mm -hmm. So Adita, you communists, uh, just uh, we communists, I should say, not you communists. <laughs> no, I don't want to get no you people kind of thing. I hate that <laughs> phrase. Y'all in favor of a big government. Is that what we're talking about here? Absolutely not. Anita? Uh, well, I think we need, we, we need a, a yeah, I, I, I like government. I think it's much better to pool our resources for the greater good of all people than to let unregulated, um, unelected bankers make the decisions about what happens in society. So I, I like the idea of, of government action, uh, you know, so. And they say that they had to go big, that that's one of the lessons that they learned mm -hmm. from what happened with Obama and them, uh, Michael, uh, after the 2007 recession, that it wasn't big enough and, and uh, so are you in favor of big government along with Anita? I am. I remember um, around the beginning of the crisis, you know, the, the pandemic of a year ago, I, I think it was one of our comrades, may have been you even, Joe, but someone wrote in, a, in an uh -oh. analysis, an assessment of the, <laughs> of, of, the, of the pandemic that what we need to save the working class is more socialism and not more capitalism. You know, and I think that means, you know, right now at this point in time, it means more government. It means more social programs, more stimulus packages. It's not going to, you know, go away with small government. It's going to, it's only going to be fixed with more government at this point. Well, we'll see this. I read this morning that they're spending uh, $43,000 a minute. So maybe it was a second until 2002 that this bill will spend 43 and if it goes to feed hungry children, Rosanna, uh, this child uh, credit is a big thing. As they say, it's going to eliminate child poverty, cut it by half. That would be a big thing, considering that half of all Black and Latino children are living in poverty. No, one third. One third. I, I, I'm exaggerating. It would be a, a it would be a huge thing, definitely. You know, to 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 think that children are starving in this country is just shameful and disgusting. Really, it's just it should not ever happen. You know, in in uh, in China, they just eliminated extreme poverty. Seven hundred million people were lifted out of extreme poverty, and they're getting ready to to bring them even up higher. They have they they've just created a plan that's going to uh, work towards that. You know, the, the, there's no reason why in this country we can't have the same. There's just no reason. And that's why this $15 minimum wage issue is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, Anita, $15 minimum yes. wage would, would uh, solve uh, 
bring one third of all African Americans out of poverty. Thirty mm. percent would. It, yeah. I mean, you know, um, arguably, it's the most. It, it would be the most important pro equality measure from an economic standpoint that you could take. Exactly. Um, and um, and when you consider that one third of all Black and Latino children are living in poverty, then if you add to the measure, you're a sociologist, right? Mm -hmm. That those living near the poverty line, you're talking about half the goddamn population. Right, Black right. And Latino, Asian children. Absolutely. And ending poverty or really, um, you know, putting a stop to at least half of child poverty right now, it really strengthens the resources and the health of the working class for years to come. Um, so it's it's really an important um, important step. I'm, uh, I think it it can't uh, women women and children really benefit extraordinarily well in this uh, in this act. So uh, there's a lot of things. Um, that, that really benefit women and healthy uh, families, healthy children and healthy women and, and their, their loved ones. So I think it's gonna be a really um, impactful. And yes, it might, uh, it might impact the um, midterms. I think, I think voters won't forget it. I see there's uh, posters now in Florida that say My Marco Rubio um, voted against COVID relief for you and your families. Um, and I would like, Portman, uh, Rob Portman, uh, to his name to be similarly linked to voting against COVID relief. I think it's a very un, un, uh, unpopular uh, stance, and not to mention Kirsten Cinema's little little curtsy and uh, Joe Manchin thinking that people can make do with less than fifteen dollars an, an hour in West Virginia. It's just uh, outrageous. So I think we need that minimum wage bill next. Well, like I keep saying, I want to see Mr. Manchin live on $11 an hour mm -hmm, that he's proposing right. for everybody else. Mm -hmm. But Scott, um, inequality is so deeply entrenched in the economy and structure, the political system, the economics, the health system, the housing, you know, that, that, that uh, inequality for women inequality for African-Americans, inequality for Latinos, for Asians. We never, even when the so-called unemployment rate was low up until the COVID crisis, it was double for Black and Latinos, double, you know? And I was just, Scott, I was, I was uh, looking at some data in preparation for a meeting on the African-American Equality Commission uh, and I, I saw that the wage gap, the racist wage was widening, mm. was widening all during the years of the so-called, from 2000 until 19, 2019, the wage gap widened even during the, so um, what does the Communist Party got to say about that? I mean, is this rescue package going to, rescue uh, us from the white deepening in inequality uh, is it gonna is it gonna rescue us uh is it gonna rescue in particular um racially and nationally oppressed people um women immigrant um it's going to do it's going to do something it's it's better than what was happening before um but the the root of all these inequalities is capitalism which, which, which requires inequality, which produces it endlessly, which uses um, white supremacy and male supremacy and, and national chauvinism and every possible means uh, to every possible inequality to, to prop up the, the power of the capitalist class. So um, this is part of um, fighting against that. It is a step in the struggle to getting rid of, of those inequalities, but, but much, more, uh, much more is needed. Like, for example, the PRO Act. The PRO Act. Michael, have you, have you read about the PRO Act? Yes. And, you know, I, I thought it was interesting. There was an article again in the People's World uh, the other day talking about the history of uh, the you know, women leading the struggle 
um, you know, 100 years ago with uh, women's suffrage, a little bit over 100 years ago, and then the fight for nine to five, you know, work day. And again, now with the PRO Act, it's women, if you go to, to see these uh, demonstrations and, you know, um, that are happening outside of senators' offices and so far, uh, so, uh, so, you know, so, so on, it's women leading these struggles. You know, they're the ones who are, you know, they're, they're being unemployed. A lot of them are uh, Black, Latino, and they're the ones demanding that this PRO Act be passed. There's really no excuse for it uh, at this point in, in the pandemic. It's been over a year. We all heard Biden's speech last night. And if something is not done, I mean, we can pass all the stimulus checks we want. Um, which it, it helps, but if there's ongoing uh, unemployment and we don't have the right to join a union of our choice, or it takes two years to join a union of our choice, nothing's truly going to be done. You know, the, they just prolong these kind of um, the bosses prolong these processes to abuse the system and to ultimately uh, tire down uh, the masses who are trying to be organized and trying to you know fight for for their rights and for for benefits, unemployment benefits, whatever, and so on. Um, and they they want them to give up. And so this PRO Act would really be a continuation of the Wagner Act that our party helped uh, fight for back in, in the 1930s. So we absolutely have to put the pressure on for that. What does that acronym stand for, PRO? Does anybody know? Protecting the right to organize. Protecting the right to organize. Remember that, protecting the right to organize. So we want you to call your senator. And there's we a want really- you to call, huh? I would say there's a really uh, fundamental um, Marx idea of Marxism behind, you know, why we support this so strongly. Right? Marx points out in the manifesto that capitalism has this contradiction at the center of it, where to uh, create profits, they need to coordinate, they need to, in a sense, organize us for their own benefit on larger and larger scales. They need to bring us together. And that was, you know, bring us together into factories, bring us together into global supply chains. But at the same time, to keep wages low, they have to keep us divided. They have to prevent us from organizing. Um, they have to keep us separated. So they're they're caught in that very difficult position. And um, this the the pro act is going to be a huge boost, as Michael said, to um, tipping that contradiction in, in favor of the the working class, in favor of our right to organize for our interest, rather than the ruling class's right to organize us for their profit. What will it do? What will it do? It will, number one, it will allow, it will prevent uh, companies from holding mandatory meetings of unionizing workers where they put them in front of a, of a TV screen and they threaten them about how terrible the unions will, will uh, be. My brother told me he was working in a steel mill once and it was in January and, and it was like 10 degrees below zero and they called all the workers out into a, a open air space. Hmm. And they said, if you bring a union in here, you'll be left out in the cold. Oh, <laughs> it was, wow. it was 10 degrees below It's like zero. you're arguing against your own point. This is shown, they show that in the um, American Factory documentary, it's on Netflix and it won an award uh, last year. And it was the same, I, I, I'm blanking. She's from Ohio, I should know who she is. Um, but she also did the documentary on our on our party called uh, Seeing Red in America back in 1983. But it's a very it's I think a lot of people watching this program don't understand uh, what workers really have to go to go through sometimes in, in order just to, to organize, you know, the threats and the videos where they put you all together and the, even the threats on um, senators and, and government, you know, politicians. Uh, and officials who support organizing. I remember in this documentary, they threatened Sherrod Brown, you know, the pro-union senator from Ohio. They say, if he comes in here supporting the union, we're gonna string him up or something. So it's it's frightening. And Rosanna, we cannot have, we can't fight inequality without having collective bargaining and unions. Right. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's, it's um, so $15 minimum wage, number one, will help. Unions will help. Uh, and then social revolution wouldn't be bad either. <laughs> <laughs> the unity well, of the think, class that's unity that's, of the work. You know, that, that, that's what the unions bring mm -hmm. is that you're not out there alone against the boss. And I think that's really key that you're not, you know, you you have your brothers and sisters in the shop and in the workplace together with you to fight some of these inequalities that you experience. 
and that's key in terms of the union, you know, the, the union concept and, 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 you know, you're not there trying to negotiate your own salary, but you, you know, you negotiate a salary together and collectively. And that's, 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 that kind of unity is needed to, to be able to, to have the, to be able to gain what you, you know, what, what you actually deserve. To be able to gain what you actually deserve. And Rosanna, you have the last word. Until <laughs> next week, stay strong, stay safe, stay in the fight. Call your congressman, call your senator, pass the PRO Act. Let's fight for that $15 minimum wage. Let's keep the pressure on. Take care, everybody. Bye. See you later, Bye. comrades.